Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to the Christ Life broadcast. The Christ Life is trying to tell people all around this world about Jesus who came to live in human beings. Hope that you're open today to the gospel. I'm going to be turning to our scripture that we've been in all this past week, which is in Ephesians 4. And I'm ready to deal with uh, verses 23 and 24. And so if you've got a Bible, turn to your Bible and join with us in the study of the Christ life. This broadcast goes around the world. There is not anyone who is omitted who has a computer. And so if you have friends or loved ones that have computers anywhere in the world, ask them to tune in our broadcast. I'm on every morning at this same time for about 15 minutes talking to you about the final gospel, the gospel that has to do with the coming of our Lord. So take your Bibles, if you will, and turn to verses 20. Uh, let's see, we're ready to deal with the verses 23. And 24. Let me read both of them together and then we'll comment on them. Verse 24 says, or 23 says, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and holiness. Put on the new man. But we're still talking about the renewed mind. You see, a lot of people have been mistaken about their salvation. They thought when they got saved, the whole man was saved. Such is not so. There is something you do in salvation. You can't save yourself. You can't apply the blood. You can't say who's going to heaven and who's not going to heaven. They are not in your prerogatives. But the one thing you can do is to show the Lord that you love him. If you love me, he said, keep my commandments. That's sort of Old Testament talking. In the New Testament, he said, they'll know that you love one another because you love the brethren. That's a pretty hard test to put on love, but nevertheless it is so. Husbands should love their wives. Wives love their husbands. Children should love their parents. It should be a love affair. In fact, that's what we have to do with is the love affair. It finally comes down to this one point. People always say to me, well, what do you do to love? You have to love Christ more than you love yourself. That's a very simple idea, isn't it? But it's not easily done because yourself is who you think you are. And until you come to a new identity in Christ, you're going to keep on thinking who you are to the very end. And the end may be too late for you to love this Lord like you want to. I want people to learn to love God, not just in singing a song once in a while, not just in hearing a fire sermon, but to love the Lord in all that they do, even if it's a hard task, even if it's a dirty task, even if it is somebody that's not worth dealing with. You love. You love because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. The Christ in you is lovable. The Holy Spirit helps you to love Him. He takes that old heart of yours and fixes it so that I don't love anything more than Jesus. That's a job you don't like to go to. I love you, Jesus. I'm going to this job. That's somebody you don't like to deal with. I don't love them very much, Lord. I love you, but help me. In other words, love should be the focal point of decisions, the idea behind every new thing we endeavor to do. And so I'm talking to you today about renewing your mind. You renew your mind. Once you get saved, born again, you need to get into Paul's epistles because he's the only one who talks about this and find out what he has to say. Remember this, if you don't like Paul, that God chose Paul to be his last apostle before God took his children off this earth in the rapture. God caused the Apostle Paul to be the apostle to the Gentiles and the apostle to this new dispensation of grace. 
He is the leader. He is the light. That's why some uh, 10, 11 times he says in his writings, follow me as I follow Christ. He don't always use those same words, but he says, do it like I do it. Why does he say that? Because he's the only one that knows this new life. David doesn't know about it. Isaiah doesn't know about it. Daniel doesn't know about it. Moses didn't know about it. The only one in this book that knows about the new life in Christ is the Apostle Paul. So we need to fix ourselves in an understanding of what he has to say to know who we are. He's the only one who can possibly tell us because he's the only one God ever gave the information to. So our text says, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That is, you take your old mind in to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, help me. It's, it's like you're taking an old watch in to be fixed. You say to the watchmaker, Here, if you will, try to fix this so it'll work good. So you take your mind in to an old mind fixer, the Holy Spirit, and ask him to fix it. You know what he's going to do? He's going to fix it so that you speak of nothing but Christ. You know nothing except that that has to do with Christ. Whether it's a business situation, or whether it's a home situation, or a church situation, the Holy Spirit will fix it so you see Christ, and only see Christ. Because that's really His mission, to fix things so that He is the center. He is the all. He is the life. Renew your mind. What are you going to renew it? Well, I've been telling you there are three ways to renew your mind. One is the Scripture. Get in the Scriptures and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. You don't need to go to some Bible teacher. They're okay. If they point you to the Scriptures, that's their main task. But if you want to know what the Scriptures say, you need to ask the Holy Spirit. He needs to be the one that deals with the Scriptures because he'll speak of nothing but Christ. He's already said that. So you go to the Scriptures, or you go to the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will just deal with you on His own. If you're open to Him, if you have an open heart, if you have an open mind to hear what the Spirit has to say, you listen to what the Spirit says. And I will tell you this about the Holy Spirit. When He gives you something that you don't know, it's usually the first thing you deal with. The first thought you have about solving a problem is usually from the Holy Spirit. Maybe not always, but if you're walking in the Spirit, the first thing that happens to you when you have a decision, powerful decision to make, it'll be the Holy Spirit that helps you. So you turn to the Holy Spirit personally and ask Him to help you. And you know what you usually do? You usually turn to somebody else. You listen to somebody else. You read somebody's book. You do this. You do that. And you don't still get an answer. And so what you need to do is to remember the first thing the Holy Spirit said to do. And you'll go back to it. Most of us do it that way. Sometimes we don't listen to Him right off. But we remember what He said. And I've heard so many believers say, Well, I wish I'd have done what I knew first to do. That was the Holy Spirit helping you. And so you're going to have a renewed mind from the Holy Spirit. Get your mind renewed to listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say. He uses outer things. He may go to some outer thing and you learn a great lesson there. He may go to a person who's not very religious and you learn a lesson there. But the Holy Spirit will be using something to show and to tell you what you should do at decision time. Renew your mind. You didn't get it when you got saved. People are always asking me, why didn't God save the mind? It's simple. He did not save the mind because that's where the love affair is. The love affair that a believer has is in his mind. So you go back to the mind to see whether or not you love. You get in a bad situation. Your bad situation has turned you from being a believer to being an unbeliever. People look at you and say, well, that person sure isn't saved. Well, they probably already are, but uh, that's the way the world looks at you. That's the way other believers will look at you. 
because you didn't listen to the Holy Spirit. He's always there. He's always ready to talk to you. And if you're not talking to him, there's something between you and him. There's something between you and the Christ that's in you. And he's not going to bring forth Christ in you until you get that thing settled and solved. That's something you're going to do. He's not going to force you to do it. He's a little dove and he don't force anything. But he does have the answer. And the other way is that you could find a godly person who could tell you what to do when you have a certain circumstance and situation and don't know which way to turn and what to do. A godly person can help you. may not be many of those around anymore. Too many of them are locked in religion. Too many of them are locked in doctrine. Too many of them are remembering what they learned 50 years ago. This is a new and a fresh message when it comes to you. It's been in the book for over 2,000 years. It's something that God always expected and wanted. But he had a hard time getting it because his servants want to put a little Old Testament in with their preaching. They want to get somebody to talk to them that doesn't know Christ, doesn't realize Christ lives in a human being, doesn't realize that Christ lives in human beings. And the end result is people go a lifetime and never really give the mind to Christ. Well, our purpose in our broadcast here is to help you give that mind to Christ. He's always waiting on you and ready for you to listen. He's a father. He is your father. There'll be some days I'll talk about nothing but him as a father. He birthed you. He's responsible for you. He's interested in you. He loves you. That's your God. God the Father. Have you ever met him? Do you know him? If you read the Old Testament, you didn't read about God the Father. Even in the four Gospels, there's little said about God the Father. But when the Apostle Paul talks about Christ living in us, the only way we have to reach the Father is through Christ. Christ is the answer to everything we have. He takes us right to the Father. He did that in his own praying. He did that in his own life. He did nothing he saw the Father not do or do. He was interested only in what his father would think about what he was doing. That's the way it's got to be as you and I. And it'll work, dear friends. It'll work. Don't tell me it don't work. It does work. But that's what God's waiting for. He's waiting for his children to turn to him and to love him. I'm always being challenged by people, why hasn't the Lord hurry up and come? Why doesn't he come on and take us? I'm so ready to go. I feel that way at times too, but I know something. I know that until he gets through dealing with his children, he's going to go. It isn't the unsaved world that's keeping him from coming, though he wants every soul to hear the gospel. And our theme for this broadcast is till the whole world knows. He would like for the whole world to know, but most of all, He's dealing with his children these days because he doesn't want to bring any up to his house that doesn't know anything about him, who hasn't been taught by the Holy Spirit about him. Well, that's a big subject, and I'll get on a little later here. But until this next Monday, that's all i got to say. This, this program, this, this broadcast will be on the air on our front page in our computer, in your computer until this next morning when you have a new message. Until then, God love you and bless you.